Yo, 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 quick market update here. It's Saturday, 3rd of December. Um, it's been a while, maybe a couple of weeks from my last uh, market update, and nothing has changed since, so I, I just haven't had the uh, necessary need to cover markets because you know, macro-wise, swing trading-wise, nothing has changed. We have played exactly as I said. Um, we have positions running, we, we are uh, keeping them open till the end of the year. I believe I'm, I'm going to close at the end of the year my positions. Well, obviously, I follow the markets, but it's just no brainer to most of the time to look intraday market action. It's just not necessary. Just follow the week, weekly candle closures, monthly candle closures, FOMC sentiment, Powell's wording, uh, how the f whole Fed board is speaking. Uh, just keep positions open and relax. It's, uh, no, don't have to pressure yourself to manage actively the uh, trade setups. Obviously, it depends about your own strategy, but for me, I tend to have positions open if they got run, if they will uh, have a good good run, run start. I will keep them from two weeks above to multiple months open. I don't have to stress out. I'm just going to scale in. It's so easier to, much more easier psychology wise for me to scale in while I'm winning than to take fast losses and then try to. Pick the market points, reversals, have like some hero stuff in play. I'm not a superstar. I'm just trying to play what's right and then scaling in when when I see uh, good good areas that are going to hold hold the support lines and uh, see how markets react to. Micro sentiments. That's it. It's not that hard. You don't have to complicate it, I'd say. Um, so, just want to like open up the whole macro view sentiment for me. Um, the current sentiment is, Mr. I mean, uh, how markets are behaving and reacting. Uh, they are misunderstanding the whole whole economic slowdown because consumer sentiment and uh, uh, spending and confidence are are good because of Black Friday. Economic activity keeps building on. It was even, uh, I believe, the consumer confidence was even better year on year than than last year, over a billion or something. So that's ridiculous. Uh, that just drives up the inflation game. As I have covered previously, uh, this, it's, the, the markets are over-optimistic, delusionally optimistic. Um, but I believe that we will get rolling downwards from the January FOMC meeting. That will have, have, a, have a significant impact once the, the party is over, uh, starting from the next year. The party is over. So January we will play bear, macro bears for a long time. I believe next year we are not going to play any any bull side. Uh, that's just an overstatement. Obviously we are playing some bulls, but seventy five percent bears next year. I'm just hoping that we get one sided volatility downwards, so it's easier. So it's not going to be this cluttered, messy, uh, ranging price action having uh, double confirmations at bottom and then here we have broken to liquidity aside from the 34k it's just uh the reality will hit in i fight i fought the market enough this year i don't want to fight it anymore just going to accept that markets are really greedy really greedy it's easier to play upside obviously but uh, you have to manage risk, and you can't be delu you can't be unconscious what is happening in the markets. But yeah, at the moment we are playing the optimism with US thirty. Uh, so 
So one thing also I want to note of the personal spending stats that I've gained, uh, they are not from savings accounts, they are not from investment accounts, they are be debt based spending, they are from credit cards. If you look at the credit card stats and, and loan stats, they are at all time highs all the time. So uh, next year when we will get tighter monetary policy and we'll have more layoffs, the ripple effect obviously, when, when you tighten monetary policy it will take above from six months that the ripple effect go, goes from credit allocation to the final jobs and it will affect employment rates and so next year we will see that because people have they are in a, in a credit card debt they have uh, maxed their their uh, debts and uh, the, the personal spending is going to get slow down mm -hmm. and that obviously means that uh, we will get uh, better confirmations for hawkish Fed and, and more rate hikes, aggressive Fed rate hikes. Dollar to 120s, I said it now, 120s. 120s. I believe we have, yeah, 120s is a good solid point to have a price targets for next year, but um, look, obviously I'm zooming in to uh, have even more upside than 120s. But yeah, definitely all of the this year's data have been kind of good. Economic activity-wise, they have been good, but Fed still have to tighten monetary policy. So that means uh, we have all of the elements there to tighten up next year and ramp up, ramp up, uh, and we'll see. We'll see what happens next year. Uh, but at the same time, Fed is playing the acting game, which is it has played for the entire year. They have been 50-50 allocation of, of wording, I'd say, how they communicate the whole PR stuff from, from Fed board. It's, it's been half uh, hawkish and dovish because they don't want to crash the market and have a, a clear 100% one-sided sentiment, which would correlate that we have a huge market crash at the same time if they are super hawkish at the same time so i have to remember that markets are driven by greed uh, they are, it's it's easier for markets to go up and the fed has to play the balancing game how they communicate and have the uh, relation uh, how they cover media stuff all right i'll cancel the video now and i'll go to the charts So here we are with them charts. DXY. I believe last time we were around. We were around uh, start of November. We had seen the huge drop off. I'd say yeah, huge because the candles are big comparing to previous price action. The ATR must must be like twice what is normal daily volatility. Uh, so yeah, obviously we broke the trend, we broke some levels, and now we are heading, uh, we broke the even lower key level, and now we are heading in this uh, price zone. When uh, we have final bottoming at 102, like a, I'd say, really the final final bottoming at 102 if it goes that far but I'm looking 103 103 is something that I'm the most confident placing placing a bias in we can if we go we go backwards in, in time scale so we can see how the price has reacted here see Multiple times we have seen how the price reacts at 103. Uh, I think I believe this. It's it's not necessary for markets. Or I, I believe it's not even possible for markets to close uh, downwards from 103. Just it would be a mess. Really, it would be a mess. Uh, this is one of the reasons why we are not playing with Fibonacci because it doesn't tell anything. If, if you'd like to play Fibonacci from here 
and you uh, like to target 61.8 or, or the 78.6 golden zone. It's just it's it's beyond possibility for markets to go that far because it, the markets have broken already 103 area, uh, and you just are going to miss out from the moves if you are waiting for some technical stuff to happen. Okay, so yeah, markets to 103 to the XY. That would mean that uh, we will have a good closure above uh, 1800 and uh, we'll have a, a tap of 1830. Uh, have a liquidity driven from there, 1830, 1850, somewhere there. Mm. But then we'll go downwards. 1800 is, is a big, is a big uh, level, but um, the gold box will try us up if, if that's the case, if that's the case. BTC, I've waited for 13.8k for entire year, it hasn't happened yet. Uh, but the final, my final prediction was somewhere around 5k. Mm, we're just I don't know. I wouldn't buy Bitcoin. I just wouldn't. That's all I'm going to say. I just wouldn't buy Bitcoin. Uh, US 30, most definitely. We had a really, really good closure above uh, 34K, which means that we have an upside for a while or ranging. Um, I'm not counting out the uh, tap of uh, all-time highs and having a double, double, uh, double top. I'm not counting that out just by judging the previous this year's price uh, action and, and how the markets have reacted to certain stuff. It's a, it's a straight possibility there. Um, but I'd say that... Uh, we we will maybe the price will drive up to 35k just tap it and i start ranging and then next year from january onwards we'll have a we'll have a good momentum downwards if i would be in stocks investing wise um i'd sell during december i'd really sell you like what are the odds here like what are you expecting if you want to have long-term growth in the stock market? What are you, what are you expecting with this uh, rate hike situation? It's messy. It's markets don't have any signs for uh, like a proper confidence to to pump up the markets. We we don't have any QEs in place at the moment. We don't have any any bond buying in place. We are still going to have uh, rate hikes. How like? You really have to be just brainwashed and delusional if you think that we have a strong chance, a chance of uh, uh, I'm just, I'm just, uh, let's put it this way. Let's put it this way. Let's say we go to 35K. You have 5.7% uh till you tap all time highs you have fifty percent of downward potential to test out this entire week which is artificial because it's this is just pure uh pure uh, quantitative easing uh, money printing is uh market action here this is like fugazi stuff here this whole entire week it's enormous the week is enormous we we, we have to test out because the federal reserves propped up market style we've never had it in place on this scale from um uh, y2k till oh gfc we never have this am amount, a trillion or was it something like that, from from, from this point to uh, last year's December highs. 
So I just believe it's 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 really uh, necessary for markets to even test out if it, if if the 18k is holding. So yeah, just thinking uh, ahead for the couple next years, which one do you have better odds, upside or downside? Ask yourself upside or downside, and then act based on that. I just believe the upside is so hindered, it's so constricted. Even even thinking about it, like, uh, but you never know. You never know, because as I said, we've we've never had this sort of eight trillion pumped into the markets in 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 one year period. So you never know if if the if the money still is there to keep fueling the risk assets. And then, but. No, it's not that because the uh, liquidity, global liquidity has gone down, actually, really, really. Uh, I, I have the charts somewhere. I might sh show the global liquidity charts in my next episode. Um, but the, li the whole liquidity cycle is going to get tightened. Uh, and I believe liquidity is the, the biggest factor that drives up market uh, with the Fed. Fed uh, Increasing their their balance sheet, but now they're shrinking the balance sheet, and uh, with with the raising interest rates, uh, the Fed has to pay. I mean, U.S. government has to pay their their uh, outstanding debts, and it's it's going to get expensive. But yeah, these are just just thoughts thoughts from 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 uh, from my side, and uh, obviously I can do all this so much better and have full detailed approach to every single asset class but um, keeping it simple and clean here and uh, obviously I will aim to aim to do in-depth analysis uh, we really like to cover oil 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 uh, because energy sector is going to have a boom next year I'd say we are going to see one 110 115 a barrel next year now it just tapped to 75. I actually had a, a buy order at 75. I actually had a buy order at 75. We just tapped it. Uh, it's been in place since summer, I believe. 75, yeah. I had a buy order here. Straight to profit. Straight to profit. But yeah. I'm just getting it to break even and, and see see 